Hello everybody and welcome to the final kilometers of the 2014 edition of Grand Prix of Ohlone. My name is Jesper Anka and I'm joined by Bob Bobson. How are you doing? I'm doing great, Jesper. Okay, it's good. So, we are joining in the final six kilometers of the Grand Prix of Ohlone. The situation is we have a four-man, actually a five-man breakaway, I believe. In the front, we've got Yellow Fernander from Lotto Bellasol. We've got Greg Van Aramat from BMC. We've got Barkelands wearing number one from Mega Farmer Quickstep. And number 66, the Luxembourg champion, Frank Select from Track Factory Racing. They've got 32 seconds down to the peloton. Do you think they can hold on to the end, Bob Bobson? I think that this is a very, very strong break, and... They don't have too much time, but they are the favorites of this race, so who's going to pull them back? We just got the information that I have, actually have 39 seconds, so the information on screen is actually wrong. But down the peloton, it does look like, or at least before, it looked like Ting of Saxobank was doing the picks, and they're trying to help their main favorite, Matthew Brichel. I know you're a fond guy of Matthew Brichel. Why is that? Because he will win Perry roubaix next year. Oh, I guess. You should put money on that right now. You'll get great odds if that actually happens. But look at this Absolutely. great view as well. This is the this is the center of Valoni. It looks really nice. It'd be nice visioning here one day. But let's focus on the race. There's still 4.8 kilometers to go. And yes, it is uh, Tinkoff Saxobank doing most of the pacing down there. And it also looks like Tussle Flannery getting in the mix. Who do they have that can do something in today's race? Kenneth Van Bussen. Oh, I know as well. You're also fond of him. This is a good race for you when you have your two main guys working for each other down the peloton. But that's a yeah. very slim peloton. Do they have the manpower to catch a breakaway with 35 seconds to go? I don't think they do, Jesper. I think that if you look at the peloton, the main guys doing the work are Tinkoff and Topsport Flanderin, but a lot of the other guys in that group are Omega guys, Lotto guys, BMC guys who have guys already ahead and they aren't going to be willing to do any pacing and I think that if you put the star power of these guys against some of the tired domestiques of those two teams I think these guys can make it it's very true and also the pre-race favorites are all in the breakaway together so I think these four guys will work together as well as they can and go on to the end so the main question is now if, if these four guys make it all the way to the end who would be your favorite well it is a steep finish I think that climbing-wise, you probably have to give it to Frank Schleck on a long mountain, but this isn't really suiting him. It's short and steep. I think that GVA probably has the, the biggest punch, but I don't know how his hills are matching up to that. Bacalance is a good uh, puncher. So who knows? Who knows? Uh, Van Endert has won hilly classics in the past or, and done well in them, but it, I mean, it's all form-based. It's all who still has it fairly late in the season, and who is going to give it a go on the steep finish? I couldn't have said it better myself. Like The, the two question marks in this group is Yellow and Endert and Frank Slate, because they are has-beens. They are no longer doing what they've done in the past, while you got two guys who are doing what they're doing best right now, when you got Jan Bakalans and Greg Van Aramant out there in the front. And Actually, exactly. I just saw Tony Gallopin back in the, in the peloton, so if Yellow Van Aramant gets caught from Lotto Bellasol, Lotto Bellasol has another joker to send away. Tony Gallopin, who actually wore the yellow jersey in the Tour de France early, so these kind of stakes is fit Tony Gallopin, I, but I really doubt these guys are getting caught. The gap is Ooh. decreasing, though. Is GVA seconds. sitting out of a pull? I... Would you allow this? If you were the other three guys, would you allow Greg Van Aramant just to sit back and wait for the sprint? Absolutely not. If they don't all work together, they could get caught. As you see, the gap is coming down now. And as well, GVA is the fastest person. It looks like he is taking a uh, pull now. But he could easily attack right before the climb and hold on. If he gets a good enough burst of speed, you, you can never take that possibility out of the equation. It does look like we have entered the final climb of the day, the Citadel de Namur, which is a 5% average gradient. It is not that steep, like in, in the average, but at certain points, this climb get very steep, as you see here. It's a very beautiful climb, but also a very, very steep climb with a bunch of hairpin turns like this one. In these turns, you can get a real big speed boost and get away. It looks like Greg Van Arman took that turn the best. Yelfenin is trying to do something on the left side, though. Can he do something? Does not look like it. He's just going to sit back. But there goes Jan Bagelan. Jan Bagelan is going for the attack right now. He's going to try to leave his other competitors behind. And it looks like he's actually getting a gap with 2.4 kilometers to go. He sure is. He's going away. This could be the final attack. It does not look like Greg Van Arman has what it takes to follow. Yellow Fernandez is giving him one last try. Mm. Oh, Greg Van Avermaet is launching a counterattack. It looks like he's making his way back up to Van Enderen. And it looks like it's... No, it's going to be close. Just about... 
back together? No, I actually think Jan Backlands has got the strongest attack right there. It's going to take a lot from these three guys to catch you up and actually do it. As I say that, the four-man group is now reconciled again. But I do not think that's the last time we've seen Jan Backlands go on an attack. He's been in form lately, so I think he can go on attack again. But Jelle Fennin is looking strong. He looks like his old days where he won the monuments in the March season and the spring season. Can he do it again now? It would be a great comeback for him. But look at the scenery of this. It looks so well. But can they do it, though? Jan Baklans doing a bunch of the pulling. Is this smart by Jan Baklans just to stay on the front? I don't think that he has much of a choice now. He's, he's broken up the chemistry between them. He's attacked them. They know that, and they followed him, and I don't think that he's. if he pulls off, they'll just follow him. However, where is the peloton at this point? We have no idea what the gap is back to the peloton right now. No, but I do not think the gap... I think the gap is big enough for the peloton not to come back. I do not think Tinko Saxobank has what it takes to catch back up, and if they do, they would have put on a lot of effort. So I think this four-man group is going to stay all the way to the end. So now you look at it. Jan Baklans just attacked. Yellow Fenner closed the gap. Greg Van Aramet sat on the back. Looked like he's done. But is that just Charette he's playing right there? Or does he have something left in the tank? Look at how small that gap is right now. You oh, can it's actually... just see the peloton coming through there. Oh, and there goes Jan Baklans again. He's Baklans off. Again. He is going. He's going to try to get away from this one. And it looks like now Greg Van Aramet is forced to try and close the gap. He's using his efforts to close the gap and not to sprint later on. And is this working? Is he? Yeah, he closed the gap, it looks like. They're now back together, all four people again. They're just not giving. They just keep on attacking, keep on working together. And, and now I actually think Frank Select has to be the favorite because he hasn't done anything. He yeah. can put in one big attack and get away. Frank Schleck has been the one guy who has not responded to anything. Yeah, when, when, when Bacalant's attack didn't respond, Van, Van Andrew then countered, he didn't respond. He just kept going, and when GVA eventually closed the little gap, he sat on there. Frank Schleck has been saving his energy this entire time, but is it because Ooh, he knows that, that he's not as good at, uh, on these kind of finishes as these guys? This could be dangerous for the breakaway. Jan Backlund just sat up to look back where at the peloton is. And you see the peloton is right there and the, the breakaway is, is right not working there. together. Who is this going into the attack? I do not see who that is. Which team is that even? That looks like a weird Almost team. Like a Tanya Rider. Yeah, and so is Vante Gobert there. So now other teams are helping think of Saxobank. This is very good for the peloton, but very bad news for the breakaway. And, and they, they are, are going to get caught. They're going to get caught here. An attack. Looks Who's like that? Is no. that Fernander? No, is that Frank Schleck? Is that Frank Schleck? I can't tell. This is so far away. It's very tough to tell who that it is. is Van Ender. That is Jelle Van Ender. And Frank Schleck has been dropped. So very Frank controversial. Dropped, so I guess it was just an energy thing. Why he didn't respond before. He's caught by the peloton. But Van Ender still going. GVA is right on that wheel, though. That he's not getting it anywhere. No, three guys on the front, on the front, all Belgian guys. So this is their home turf. They know these city like the back of their pocket. So we've got Jelfen in the front, followed by Greg Van Aerman from BMC and Jan Bakelans, my favorite right now from Omega Pharma like Quickstep. Coming across too. Yeah, this is very scattered apart right now. Look at these three guys. They're not working together. Again. Yeah. They've sat up again. Frank Slade coming of back. Coming across is that Gallopin? Oh, that could actually be Galpin. Or is that Frank Slake coming back? No, that is a lot to ride. That could be Tony Galpin. And he's now leading out Greg Van Arum, and He's going too fast. This is a mistake in my book by Lotto Bella. So they have two guys. They should try to work together, not work against each other. Yes, they definitely should have had Van Ender do some kind of lead out in this case, but instead they put Gallopin on the front, now they're sitting up again. There's We're another the rider final kilometer here. We got four guys in the front. We got Tony Gallopin from Lotto Belsol. We got Greg Van Aramet from BMC. We've got Jelle Van Ender from the Lotto Belsol as well. And now Frank Slag also closed the gap. So we got five guys uh, five guys up here. It's like a Wanty guy also coming across. Yeah. The gap is really small now and a lot of guys just testing their that luck. That could be Van Bilsen. Now they're sitting up again. More people are going to be able to join this group. We're going to have a mass sprint for the finish it looks like, but is this Lotto Belsol going to attack? No, it's not. We're in the final turn to the kilometer. 500 meters to go. You got leave everything on the line. This is right about the time where you have to go on it. And Yellow Fender realizes that. He goes onto the attack. This could be a setup for Tony Gallopin. Greg from is on there as well. He's on the right side. He's going to launch his final sprint. Now Jan Baglans is on the inside. And Jan Baglans is going for a really, really far one. As Greg from sets up and goes on his wheel. And there goes Greg from It looks like he's going to be the biggest favorite to win the state so far. He's got the lead. He's got the power. He's got the will. And he's going to take the final turn with a 50 meter gap down to Jan Baglans. And I think Greg from has this one in the bag, ladies and gentlemen. What do you think, BBL? He's got it. Gallopin left it too late. He didn't use his teammates right, and it's going to pay him. Exactly. It looks like we're going to have Greg Van Aaron first, Tony Gallopin second, and Jan Bakelans in third. He was so aggressive, but it just didn't work out for him. In fourth place, we're going to have Yelfin Ender, Matthew Brichel, uh, Dylan Toons, Frank Slag in sixth or seventh, it looks like. But that was a very exciting finish. Greg Van Aaron takes the wind.